Someone's going to have questions here. Do you want to? Get well, rid we're happy to give Senator. Why don't we? Why don't we, I just can't stand looking at that haircut for any oh, longer. So why don't we put him on go. first? Senator Zenefod, you've got the call. It looks like a concrete doesn't it? You look fine, Senator. Um, I think it's very fast. I do have. I do have some questions to ask concrete, about. Concrete, I did do it. Uh, okay. I don't know if this is very relevant to. Uh, I do have some questions, and I'll be guided by my colleagues through you, Chair. Uh, I do have some questions about the uh, tragedy at Essendon Airport and, and safety zones. Uh, have some questions related to CASA and air services. Um, and uh, uh, they're the two primary areas that I'll be traversing. So um, I'll be guided by my colleagues in that. So can I just, um, what, role does, what role does CASA have, Mr Carmody, in relation to rules as to how close developments can be to airport runways? Uh, Senator Shane Carmody, uh, Acting CEO of CASA and Director of Aviation Safety. Senator, the role, the role we have is, is what, what normally would occur is um, that uh, those wishing to develop something on the airport would go to the department. The Department of Infrastructure and Regional Development would come to us and, to, and, and I presume to a number of others and seek advice on the safety implications of such a development. Okay. So that, can, can you tell me this? I mean, that's quite, respectfully, that's quite a vague <coughs> answer. If you go online, any search of academic papers online, there are uh, you know, dozens of papers you can find on calculation of third party individual risk, determining mm -hmm. public safety zones for airports. That's uh, um, and a lecture that Turks talks about a uh, description of the calculation method mm -hmm. um, and how you determine that. I mean, it's an academic paper that I've referred to. There's another one in a 2000, since about 2008, the Fourth International Civ uh, Congress in Palermo, Italy, proposal of methodology for air airport public safety zones policy. So th there is a fair body of information there out there. In determining the risk, is, is there not? There, there is, uh, there is, and I was just sort of going through the process, in reality, of saying how that we provide advice. Uh, Mr. Tidi, who is uh, the manager of air navigation, airspace, and aerodromes, can give you the details on how this works. Thank, Sorry, thank, am I, uh, thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Evening, uh, chairman, colleagues on the committee. Um, Andrew Tidi, I, I think I've been introduced. The uh, public safety zone. Um, item is a matter of government uh, policy. Uh, relates to protection of the third parties, as, um, as uh, Senator Xenophon has, has said. The only public safety zone legislation in Australia exists in Queensland, and um, um, we can uh, we can look at that in, in, in detail. Perhaps not this evening, uh, but if it's uh, if it's helpful. In the, in the case of this accident, um, a public safety zone a protected area would not have. Um, played in the in the role of the uh, the accident, the the aircraft didn't enter what what we would understand to be a, a, a public safety zone area. Um, traditionally or historically, public safety zones have been a, a quite a sensitive area for government and the and the NASAG, and um, it's been in discussion in Australia since about 2010. But a little um, little headway has been been made. It's. Um, I'd suggest more of a policy matter than, than a CASA matter. How, on, how is it a policy? Well, you're there to determine, in terms of safety, uh, of those that, that uh, use aircraft, and you don't say CASA has a role to say this ought to be an appropriate buffer zone or an appropriate safe, uh, public safety zone so that if a plane does suffer from, uh, does lose engine power, uh, it has the maximum chance of, of landing safely, rather than having a building in the way. That's correct. That's mm. So there's no, but there are, are there any rules to, the, there are no rules, are there? The, 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 the state, state of Queensland has some, uh, some state. Uh, no, but what's your role? What's CASA's role in this? CASA's role is, uh, would be to provide uh, uh, a regulatory input to the discussions as the policy right. is developed. So you don't have a role to say to councils, local councils or, or whomever controls the, the land around the airport, to say, we don't think you should be developing, having a, a whopping building uh, within 500 metres of that runway? 
I think Mr Carmody highlighted that in the, in the case of leased federal airports, um, where in the case uh, of what, sorry? Of the federally leased airports, yes. we're a referral agency to the department. We provide safety advice to the department. And the department considers all of the advice that it receives, I think, in the development planning process, Senator. Including, our, including ours. So, so you don't have a role to say, we don't think there should be development within this particular area, of a, within, the, within this particular space near a runway? If, if, we, felt, if we felt that the, the development was too close to the runway, certainly, okay. that's, what we, well, that's, what, that's what we would do. How, how do you get that feeling? If you feel that it's too close to a runway, what, what is the criteria? I mean, if you feel it's too close to a runway, is, do you have a set of parameters? Do you have a set of rules? Do you have a set of criteria for that? Are you seeking uh, prescribed airspace uh, type responses in terms well, of Well, I mean, of, of if there's a big building that's, in, that's, that's, uh, that's off right. a runway, and if there's, engine, if there's engine failure, and you know, you've got methodologies for air, uh, airport public safety zones, uh, which say where you ought to or not to mm. locate buildings mm. uh, in the way of a runway, Let's, uh, Senator, we can, we can probably make it clear in terms of obstacle limitations, if you like, obstacle limitation services, which is what this is really about, whether there is an obstacle, whether there is an obstacle in the way of an aircraft. Um, okay. So that's, I mean, that's, that's what the, the parameters okay. on which so, the decisions so are made. For instance, when was the DFO, when was the building at the, uh, at Essendon, near Essendon Airport that was involved in that tragedy? Uh, when was that approved, do you know? The uh, DFO was approved in 2004. In what role did CASA have in respect to that approval? Did you have any input th in that? I think we were, uh, our advice was sought. Right. Um, our advice would have, was sought and would normally be sought in these sort of things. And, and what was your advice? Uh, Senator, I, can you take I'm it not on sure. notice? Can we take it on notice? Mr. Um, Tidy, do you remember what your advice was? Mr. Tidy, yeah, was, was Mr. Tidy wasn't with us either. Okay. Um, so Apologies. the, the, but the, um, but if I make the point that Mr. Tidy made before that, that, um, that the DFO, in terms of that runway, would be outside of the obstacle limitation surface parameters. So we, if we had a provided advice, we would probably provide advice that on that runway, that DFO construction would be fine. But the obstacle limitation, the obstacle limitation uh, constraints are quite different from the matters raised in numerous academic papers around the world who say that there ought to be a public safety zones mm -hmm. policy in respect of where you locate buildings in the event that there is an engine failure. In fact, uh, no less than Senator Fawcett, uh, given his background in aviation, did raise his issues of the uh, ATSB back in May 2012 estimates uh, relating to issues of following a partial loss, uh, power loss or complete engine failure. So it's not as though this is something that hasn't been raised in the context of, of this process by no less than Senator Fawcett back uh, almost five years ago. Well, I can provide a, a response to that on notice, Senator, if you wish. Provide right. as much detail as so I can. So, can you tell us what role did yep. did CASA have? What input? What what information was it provided to it? What role did it have in respect of the uh, the development at Essendon yeah. Airport a number of years ago? Uh, and also, uh, I note uh, that uh, an, an article in the Herald Sun on the 21st of February um, by uh, Claire. Vickers uh, said that Australia asserts that Australia has no guidelines on buffer zones mm. to limit development around airport runways, unlike the United States and the United Kingdom, which have implemented public safety zones, that there is no such legislation here. Is that your understanding? Uh, I think Mr T uh, outlined that before, that the only legislation is in Queensland, but I'd want to check that, Senator. Right. I'd be happy to respond but to that on notice. Do you think CASA has a, has a role, given its statutory roles um, under Section 9 of the Civil Aviation mm. Act to to have a more active role in terms of appropriate buffer and safety zones. We certainly, airport. we certainly have a role in providing advice. I think we'd one of the would be one of the providers of advice. Um, Should so she be the, one of the preeminent advisor, mm. uh, providers of advice on safety? Yes. Senator, if I, if I may, the uh, can I ask what? Sorry, if I may, yeah. just ask, yes, Badgerys Creek has any assessment been made in terms of? Developments around Badgerys Creek. Uh, we haven't been involved in any assessments, as far as I know. Andrew, do you know? Uh, there, um, just to be very clear, we we do work with obstacle limitation services and pans off services as prescribed airspaces in Australia. A public safety zone is a, is a, a slightly different 
um, area, which is an extension of the but, runway. But runway it falls within your, uh, within your jurisdiction, does it not? As as, um, as a referral party, as an advisor, as a referral as a referral power. I mean, the the it's where we where we normally where we normally operate is in terms of obstacle limitations, so penetrations into the space. So no, 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 no. I know about I, obstacle I, I, limitations, but so, we're talking about yep. public safety zones. As far as where, I know, where the United States yeah. and the United Kingdom. Um, have had those in place for a number of years. To my knowledge, we've had no involvement in them, mm -hmm. Senator, but I'd be very happy to come back and talk to you about it. Do you mind if I Please do, ask Chair. a question mm -hmm. at this Please point? Do. Mr Carmody, who do you, if, if we were to ask informed Australians uh, who was the pre-eminent advisor on air safety in this nation, uh, do you think that they might nominate your organisation? Senator, no doubt. Okay. And do you think they might labour under the honest but mistaken belief that from time to time you might create advice and give it to government of the day and indicate that perhaps they should look seriously at measures that might enhance air safety? Certainly, Senator. All right. So in the history of cancer, uh, are you able to tell us whether ever uh, this question has been visited upon? and advice being developed and given to any government at any time? Senator, I'd have to take it on notice. All I could say is that we provide advice on safety all of the time. Uh, public, safety, public safety zones at the, at the end of runways, um, I'm, I'm just not certain about. I know that we provide comment on airport master development plans, all of the changes to the federally leased airports on a regular basis. So, so we are in that space, that's what we do. But I'm just trying to work out where um, how, how far this um, public safety zone requirement would extend. Well, have you looked into well, it? Well, you that, well, that, well, that, no, that I haven't. Would, that, would, that would be a question yep. for your study. <laughs> uh, I, I'm simply but, in a very simple question. You, you can, hmm. you're, you're taking on notice, at least as the burden of my question, will require just one word, and that is whether it has ever happened, yep. and if it has happened, uh, to supply it, because. Uh, with all these other jurisdictions, you know my history in investigating catastrophic aircraft accidents all over the world. Uh, it, it always struck me that where there was a trend in terms of air safety, uh, and particularly in developed nations who took these matters very seriously, Canada, the US, uh, United Kingdom, um, you know, other, other, other jurisdictions, if you like, uh, took a keen interest in it. So if, if, we've, if, if Senator uh, Xenophon's uh, research is, uh, is accurate, that th this has happened in so many places with uh, developed aviation safety policy around the world, and we haven't looked at it, I'm going to be interested to know. I mean, Senator, 